Sifu Paul Lapointe. Uh, he is a Tonglong master out of, I believe, Arizona, right? I'm in Arizona. I would never use the there word you. master. <laughs> um, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself for us. Um, so again, my name is Paul Lapointe. Um, I teach martial arts here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, my background is jujitsu, kajikimbo, <clears throat> and um, Tong Long, Tong Long Chuan, which is mantis boxing kung fu. Primarily do mantis boxing kung fu as well as the jiu jitsu. So um, when, did you, when did you start training? How old were you? So officially started when I was nine years old. I'm 41 now. Started in a style called Shitoru Karate um, mm, in Savannah, okay. Georgia. Came back to Arizona, picked up Jiu Jitsu 94, um, started in um, Chinese martial arts, God, I want to say around like 97 and did the two concurrently, um, just waiting for, you know, as instructors and always, martial arts and always did this. I joke, you know, I officially started when I was nine. I say unofficially because my, my brother and I were terrorizing my parents running around with plastic ninja soul. <laughs> Techniques we saw in video games or movies. I mean, you grew up in the 80s. I mean, look at the television, look at the video games, all of that. That was those were really my first martial arts instructors. So, um, your uh, what uh, what was the uh, the style of karate you did again? So Shitoru? I did Shitoru karate for Shitoru. three years, starting when I was nine. Um, I remember two things about doing the, the ridiculous little like sea walk thing you go up and down the mats, mm -hmm. and then there was a um. Catherine Sensei, who was, she was the one she taught in this, in this church um, hall, she, she loved this little ch um, chin knot um, technique. Where she, she called it the can opener, which was basically just applying pressure with the thumb, you know, ripping it back <clears throat> if somebody grabbed. Because uh, uh, shiteru is, because um, of my background in Okinawa, the shiteru is what they would consider to be the, the, one of the original, the northern styles of uh, Ishinu Karate. Oh. So. It's a, it, so they, they also call it shurite is another term they'll use for it as well. Interesting. And then tell me a little bit more about the Kaju Kimpo. So, um, so I started in <clears throat> Jiu-Jitsu, um, but what happened is- so, I'm sorry, I'd say Kaju Kimpo, didn't I? I'm, no, yeah, no, you're fine though, no, because I did Kaju Kimpo as well. Um, okay. So what I started in Jiu-Jitsu under, well, originally I wanted to do Karate when I came back to Arizona, I wanted to do anything and everything. We lived out in the country. Um, and we finally convinced my mother to drive us about an hour to what, the closest big city, Sierra Vista. <clears throat> we were going to do half keto. My father heard about that. He put the stop on that real quick. So we were left with what we could find in our small town of Benson, mm -hmm. Arizona. And it turned out there was both a judo program down there as well that was taught in the high school gym. And then there was a jujitsu program taught in the elementary school um, gymnasium. And I had a friend's brother who was doing the jujitsu program. So got involved with that, actually wound up doing the judo program as well. Um, and it turned, you know, we kept training. It turns out when we started coming to Tucson where I live now and we do in jujitsu, we do in our thing, you know, we trained five days a week for like, honestly, three, three hours a day, three to five hours. You couldn't get it, couldn't get enough of it. It was just, it was awesome. You know, it's not what I wanted, but once I found it, it's like, oh, this is awesome. <clears throat> so we, we did this. And then the instructor, because of the time frame, I mean, this was in the 90s, Taibo was big. So he was teaching some cardio kickboxing um, after his jujitsu class. So us being a little bit, I don't want to say meatheads and high school guys. <laughs> so we would stay late. You know, we'd do our jujitsu workout for an hour and a half. And then we'd go do the, his, his cardio kickboxing. It was punching, kicking. It was a good workout. And his daughter, one time, she kind of said, she's like, you know, she's like, you know, a lot of the strikes and stuff that's based on like his Kaju Kimbo class, which is on a different day. Why don't you guys come in and do that? So then I started training two martial arts with the guy. And that was how it started. Turned out, you know, years later, when you first start something, you, you know, you're doing something cool. You don't really go into the history, all these things. And you realize, wait a second, Benson Hulk. And, I, and I, his, his father had just retired um, from martial arts training. He's still coming and teach sometimes. And so then I was working with Joseph Hulk. And then you find out Joseph, he's one of the five founders of Kaiju Kimbo. So he was one of those guys who came in there. 
the Kaju Kimbo that we did was really jujitsu with strikes because he was the guy who brought jujitsu in. Like, if it's one of the reasons I don't teach Kaju Kimbo these days, because okay. Kaju Kimbo, you look it up on the internet, you talk to most people. I don't care what lineage it is, you look at it, it's mostly Kimbo. Um, it's Kimbo based because Imperato was the main guy who went out and you know propagated the style and pushed it and evangelized it. So trying to explain to people what we did, like, well, this is actually as close as you can get to the founder, studied under one of the founders and his son. But <clears throat> again, it was mostly, again, jujitsu with some kickboxing elements. So, so that, that, was, that was that. So um, now, how did you come across the, the tunnel? How old were you when you came across that? One of my buddies who um, I met um, while training jujitsu and kaiju kimbo under Vincent, he came in one time because we were mostly we were all about self defense. I mean that was the big thing. I mean Benson was he was part of the entry team on the Tucson SWAT team, retired. He also taught hand to hand in the military. His his father was a colonel in the military, so a long lineage of military and law enforcement. What how how did we make this work? So that was our focus. Well, this guy he said, oh, you got to come over. You got to try this style. You got to try this. It's so cool. They're doing jump kicks. They're doing all these things. Sure, I need another martial art. I can get another hole in the head, but I was young, so I went and did that. And turns out, um, the school they taught Tong Long, they taught Chin style, Yang style Tai Chi. Went over and <clears throat> started training with those guys. In the beginning, it was the internal stuff, or what people say in Toronto, I don't believe in that. Um, it's just elements of the same martial art. But the the Tai Chi portion, really, really amazing. The extra, the um, what they would call external or the Tong Long was really taught more, you know, forms, performance based. And we did some barrel rolls in there. We did some really cool stuff, tornado kicks. <clears throat> we started off with that, but that that was my intro into that. As I did it, I loved it, and I started doing it up until the instructor at the time um, he retired. He actually moved to Arizona to retire, but he started teaching. We did that. He retired from martial arts teaching. So I was kind of left adrift, and I was like, well, I still got my jujitsu, I still got my kaiju kimbo, I wanted to continue with kung fu, so, but I didn't want to do the performance stuff. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do, you know, traditional mantis, and what was a kind of a, a hybrid mantis style is what they did. It was like um, a guy named, Ye um, his instructor was a guy named Yao Li, who taught out of Boston, who was like um, Chan Poi, if you ever seen, like Wallam Kung yeah. Fu, mm -hmm. performance. It was like his right hand guy. Like you go to the 1980s black yeah, guy, yeah. you'll see Yao Li. Super athletic, coolest shit you'll ever see. It's a it's a lot like um, modern wushu. Um, but I knew that you know it was fun learning some new things, but I wanted to do pure on self-defense. So I started researching more into mantis and getting involved in it, like training with guys at seminars, going to different things, researching. One of the things I discovered was I had copies of um, Chan Poi's old curriculum from, from 80, from 80, I can't remember if it was 80 or 82. And one of the things in the advanced forms, there was all these things like swallow flying through the woods and 18 hands. And I'm looking at these, these are, and I do the research, they're seven star sets, Chishing Mantis. Mm -hmm. It turns out, you know, as you do more of the research, he was good friends with Brendan Lai, mm -hmm. who was under the Hong Kong Mantis lineage, just under Wong Hong Fun or, you know, coming in here. And so you look at this, like, okay, started to put two and two together. This is where, so I, I started looking at seven star, like, oh, wow. And I, you know, fortunately, you know, the road um, led to um, like Tony Puyo. And like, this is a guy who, yeah, he could do the flashy shit, but that's not what he does. Like Puyo mm -hmm. is also, a guy. he's somebody who specialized, he worked with Vice. He also worked with SWAT. This is a guy who worked secure, not mall security, but this is a guy who, you know, spent a lot of time, you know, Tijuana, you know, Southern California back in the day, a little, a little bit rougher. And so the parallels between him and Benson are huge. Um, and so, and at the time, Benson um, developed cancer. And so he wasn't, he wasn't involved much. I mean, unfortunately, Benson did pass away from cancer, but there was a lot of parallels between the two. So I really kind of just wholeheartedly dove in training with a Puyo still working on my jujitsu from that I got from Benson and there were just so many parallels the, like here's a guy who can actually fight with you know Chinese boxing 
kung fu, traditional wushu, take whatever you want to call it, is nobody else like that I've met, done seminars with, that I've seen online, holds a candle to this guy. Like the first time we went out to train with him, I, I saw him on this um, this conference DVD that I that was online. At the time, I was I didn't have money, couldn't go out. I discovered him like, wow, this guy looks like he knows what he's talking about. He's talking about you know concepts and theories and principles. Didn't contact him online, tried to get a hold of him. Did you know? We we spoke a little bit. I think I lost a job or something. I didn't have money, so I kind of let let the conversation fizzle off. Eventually, came back to him. He invited us to come out and train, and I was like, "What? Well, you know, how much is this training?" Like, <laughs> what is, because well, you know, at that time I didn't have the job I do now, and I could I was I didn't want to put I didn't want to offend him, and I didn't want to say. And he's like, "It's free." Well, what do you mean it's free? Um, you're close by. You're in Ramona, which is San Diego, compared to Tucson. You're like a five-hour, six-hour drive away. But what do you mean? He's like, he's like, you don't know if I'm full of shit. Like, I love, I love Tony. Intro. I like him. I do. That's a good intro. We right. go out there. I mean, long story short, we go out there and we train with this guy. We come back. We're bruised up. We're like, I took my my, my top guy who I, uh, trains under me. We went out there, we're bruised up. We come in, we're, we have huge grins on our face. Like he beat the shit out of us. <laughs> and he's like smacking me right now. He's like, I did not. But <laughs> he beat the concept into what we wanted to go out there. We compared stuff. We was like, okay, do this to me, do this, you know, show me, let, let's, let's spar, let's do these things. And we came in there and some stuff that we did was good. Other stuff, he showed us that it wasn't a, a, a pinprick hole it was, you know, this black hole in the striking element. Because that's what we were looking at with the strike. I mean, I'm a grappler. I did some pull on, did the striking. Puyo, just out of this world, his level of Tong Long was just amazing. So that, that was kind of like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've been associated with him, trained with him. I do stuff slightly different, which you'll never be the same as the people you train with because right. you have different interests. My mix is different than his. <laughs> But your body style, your your understanding, your your the way you approach things are yeah. different. I you should never be a you should never be a carbon copy of your teacher. You never. should be a you should be a a different copy of your teacher. You're in, an evolution. In sense. You're influenced by this. Right. We used to joke around and say that a lot of this stuff is like it's like a dating profile. And we and we told people <laughs> we're like we're 80 to 85 percent compatible. <laughs> like I will always be more of a grappler. Like my Tong Long is always going to have probably more throws, but it doesn't matter because he, the philosophy when you do um, Puyo with with Puyo um, with his message, message, he did both eight step and seven star, but it's all mantis. And when you do this, is we you know we close, we hit, we throw, we finish. Like that's that's what mantis believes, and I mean a lot of martial arts have that same philosophy. But I do, yeah, like, it's a legit thing, you know. Martial arts, like, you know, the boxing, the staying out, striking and stuff is okay. It works more in sports. In general, you want to finish a fight. Right. So long answer, and, short question, that's kind of the nickel tour of, of how long I've been doing Mantis. I mean, started in about 87-ish, still doing it, still learning. That's why I laugh when you say master. I'm like, better, better than a lot, not near as good as a lot. Yeah. I'm still in the box middle. Maybe. I'll always get always give people the credit if you've spent you've spent a most of your lifetime late learning something. In my opinion, you're a master. You should be given you know somewhat of a respect level of what you've done, especially if it's legit. You know, it, it, give respect where respect is due. So my next question would be, how how do you think uh, marsh studying? both uh, the Japanese styles and also the Chinese styles, martial arts, this helped you in your life, uh, work-wise, your personal life, your interactions with people. How has that kind of helped you or uh, no, 100%. made you a better person? <laughs> no, for me, for martial arts, I think um, you get a lot of the elements of like, you learn how to public speak, you learn how to hold yourself in society. It's not just in conversations, it's whether it's confrontations, when there's something that, is a rise. You, you've put yourself in situations and you've put yourself through training that people just don't do nowadays, whether it's my interest in fitness. I got that from martial arts because we didn't scream at mirrors. I, I've never done that type of martial arts. 
Um, we've always, it's always been partner driven and you leave class sweaty, you're soaking wet. Um, you get, you're not completely, you're not beat up, but you get, you know, you get bruises. I mean, your forearms get hit. Sometimes, you know, your nose has a little bit, you know, pop in it, it's put back and pieces like that. I mean, it makes some of like regular life. You're like, yeah, it's not that bad. You know, I, I've been through this. I put myself through something harder. At the same time, you learn how to interact. I mean, I would say a, <clears throat> a good portion of my social structure right now has some tie-in to martial arts. Whether you trained with me, I trained with you, we trained under the same guy. I mean, like attracts like. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's what it's confidence, it's friendships, it's, I mean, hell, I, you know, for, started at nine officially, for, I'm 41, don't intend to stop. I mean, it's given me a hobby that a lot of people don't have, other than sitting in there with the um, channel clicker. Nice. And those are the fun things, too, that you, you get those stories, like, where it's like, <clears throat> I remember in college, I worked, so I, I, I'll raise my hand, I was one of those people, I've talked shit about Taekwondo, I still occasionally talk shit about I still about do. Taekwondo. I still do. <laughs> but I with those guys who are legit. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> college, I had a friend who was a bartender. I'm six foot, 200 pounds. I'm not a small dude. He was, he had to be like six, three, six, four and bigger than me and found out dude does Taekwondo. Okay. I do my stuff. We decided, you know what? We're going to go over to the U of A rec center back in the day. It wasn't what it is right now, but we found a room and we decided, you know what? We're going to spar. And when I say spar, we didn't put gear on. We just, we just went in there put the work and, and, you know, and, and we tagged each other, light contact and stuff. This dude at his size managed to land this jumping, spinning back kick thing that Taekwondo and it's, oh, you know, and it's like, oh. those, are the cool <laughs> those, I mean, I've had, like, I've worked with Wing Chun guys, like seeing other like Chinese martial arts instructors out in bars. And then luckily we didn't get kicked out, but it's like, oh, you do Wing Chun, you know, I do Tong Long. <laughs> He's doing his Wing Chun. And, we're ch- and, we, and we just say, you know, kind of touched hands real quick and just to see, you know, getting in, could we get, get a strike? Yeah. These are the stupid things that when you put two martial arts, <laughs> right? especially there's alcohol involved. <laughs> it's the fun stuff. It is. The, um, I was... Um, I'm di- let me digress before I even get into that rabbit hole. Um, so so um, you mentioned something earlier too about uh, Tai Chi, and because I think you and I have share a common um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for view on this. Uh, when you mentioned about the Tai Chi and the Qigong and that kind of stuff, and when you get into that mysticism and things, tell me a little bit more what your thought process is on that. Um, so I don't want to quote Master Ken, but it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right good. <laughs> um, but so I will say this, like, so when the first guy that I, that, in, that opened my eyes to Tong Long, he was an amazing um, Tai Chi practitioner. He was that guy who, you know, would touch you, do the little Bruce Lee one inch punch thing, who moved you back. He was very meticulous in going over like Faji, Tingjing, uh, very different types of energy, not from a mystical point, but from a body mechanics. This is why you're able to do this, which is a huge part of any martial art, boxing, Japanese, Chinese, Chinese take it a little bit um, more scientific, in my opinion, actually boxing does as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... You come in there, and so he had that element. He, and this is an old guy, mind you. Like, he started martial arts when he was 49. Um, oh, wow. He, That's late. In late 80s now. He's still kicking. He, you would never know from his age because he still walks. Around. He doesn't use a cane. He's upright and fairly good health. And one of the things that, that stuck with me to this day is that the problem with Tai Chi in this world is people try to, um, they try to teach it fitness without the martial arts aspect mm-hmm. even if they're going to say this is how it applies they're not actually training that aspect right. they're just conceptualizing and he would say that's kind of like splitting a nickel if i split a nickel and give you this one half that just has the heads or just the half of it is it still a nickel mm-hmm. it's not it's half a nickel you don't the, you know some of the parts don't make the whole and so that's the problem with modern Tai Chi is if you don't teach it in a self-defense aspect, you can do, you can do fitness. Hell, you can do baseball, basketball, any of that stuff slow with an old person and it can be, it can be fitness. 
But so that's like the Qigong, the Qigong. It's, it's exercises, there's breathing, there's lots of elements to this. But doing a martial art slowly with an emphasis on health does not make it a martial art. Yeah. And a lot of people may disagree with me on that, but no, that, is, that is my hill I will die on, is <clears throat> not, I have, I have never met, God, I'm gonna get called out on this. You're fine. I have never met a Tai Chi person. If your primary martial art is Tai Chi, you cannot fight. Right, I would agree. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I would agree. I, I know good guys that do Tai Chi and they can't fight. Puyo is Tai Chi. Great. I, I used to do Tai Chi. I know lots of people who do Tai Chi, but it's not their only source because mm -hmm. um, it's not trained that way anymore. It's, it's, you can say evolved, that's fine. It's evolved into something different. It's, you know, it's fitness, it's movement, it's flow, it's art. And those all things are, they're true. But unless you teach it as a martial art primary and get this health and the benefits in secondary, mm -hmm. it is no longer a fighting art. That's exactly what I teach. I teach Tai Chi, Yun style and Chin style. And that's exactly what I, when I teach it, I go, you all have to realize this was a martial arts before it was ever an internal martial art from what we would look yeah. at it today. So you have to learn what, what is, you know, part the horses mean, you know, what is brush knee, you know, push palm, what are these? You have to, you have to understand them. You have to train it. You can't just mm -hmm. fight um, that. We have a saying in on our, <clears throat> fighting a wooden, fighting a one-armed man mm -hmm. is when you do something like, okay, I say, okay, this is this, or, you know, I come in here and I, I just throw you, I'm saying this, but unless I train this in an atmosphere and a method that I can actually apply it on somebody, and we run into this even in other martial arts like jiu-jitsu, I see guys that do chin nar, concepts, whatever you want to call it, joint lock, shine, all this stuff, and they just do it very static. Mm -hmm. Or they do it very fake, like a lot of um, Aikido practitioners, you know, you know it's, <laughs> it's coming at you, and they do it fast, and now I, I turn here, you turn here. Well, it's fighting a one-armed man or you know somebody who's rehearsing. You mm. need somebody who is going to give you resistance, somebody who's going to move like somebody else would move. And then you also got to understand that there's two categories. There's somebody who's on a, a street person. And I don't mean like a fighter. I just mean natural people or regular people on the street like, tend to be off balance. Tend, you know, you can do this stuff, get away with it. Then you try to do it on a guy like yourself. You've been around the block once or twice. You're not probably not falling for, you know, me doing this thing. Okay. You know, you grab me to do a wrist lock. I hit you in the face. Okay. On the other hand, like I teach a lot of chin na. And the first thing that, that I teach is like, what's the other hand doing? What's their body doing? Where are they moving? What are you doing? Because it doesn't matter if you can do this lock. If you can't do it effectively in combat in a real situation, you're back to that same thing. Like we said, we're splitting a nickel. You're doing martial dance. Yes, and that's uh, my uh, one of my teachers. Uh, the way we approached and we taught uh, Chana was pain first. That was our. That was what we like. We were going to do it. It was like, and he would if we didn't like we were working on it. He says pain first. What would you do? What'd you do to give them pain? Because they're not going to sit there and let you put the put you in that joint locker. You know, get that finger grab. They're going to resist. So what kind of pain did you give them first? And you're like, oh, okay. So then you would have to go back, and that was what I was getting ready to get into too is um and this is getting more into some of the traditional stuff but the concept of feeding and it, i think you did you did you say kali or anything like that um so one of the things they did in kaju kimbo is they did a screamer and stuff coming in okay. kali so the i the concept of feeding in it and if you look at and this is be a, um, an example with even jujitsu in live people so if i'm teaching you a, a you know, like a, a block and a strike. If I'm going to teach you one, two, three, strike, one, two, three, strike, you have to have somebody feeding you the technique. I'm going to throw the punch. I'm feeding it to you after progression. Um, and this is what I want to get your idea on it. Do you believe into uh, teaching that way or you believe into just here, I'm going to throw the punch, do, deal? Both. For, um, so, when it comes to the technique, so I will say, so like with the chin, like I'll, I'll finish that thought real quick. It's so like when you, when you teach um, a move, whatever it is, 
a lot of people when they learn it, they learn it. It's compartmentalized. It's I don't want to say it's dead, but it's it's one word. Like you can't learn the English <clears> language. <throat> you learn one word. Um, you need to learn flow on your chin. Na is the same thing. All these te- any technique is the same way. You learn a wrist lock, shoulder lock, whatever it is, pressure point. It's one part of a whole. And so when I when I teach the technique, um, I tend to like for the example, like when I teach chin na, I show you first we look at the body mechanics of what's going on. Like this is what we're gonna do. Okay, make sure you can do that. Now we go into how would that be applied. And it has to go from different angles. It has to be applied. Like, mm. where's that other strike? Can I do it if the person's resisting? Can I move them? Can I put them down? Because no chin na, no t- wrist lock. I don't just like grab your wrist and put you on your knees. That's, that's a martial arts trick. Aikido guys, jujitsu guys, chin na guys love to do that in front of an audience at demos. And I can move you up. I can make you dance like a marionette. Um, but it's putting the person down, putting them down, finishing where they go. Um, okay. Finishing the flow. So that's the same thing like that. When you, you know, you talk about like feeding versus just, if I'm just standing there in a boxing stance and I'm going to come in there and I'm going to hit you, you're not doing any chin on. You're just not. Right. Um, okay, you're gonna, <laughs> on the other hand, you do stupid stuff as a bystander or as an aggressor, I could put my hands on you. Hmm. I can grab you. I can just put my hands up. Those things are what I would consider feeding. We also call, call it, um, in Mantis, we call it like knock. Or, you know, knock on the door, who's there? Because I want you to say, who's there? I want you to, you know, I want some response from you. Um, so this might be one of those things as I move, you put your hand up. Okay, now with the hand's up, I grab, I move, and I take you down. There's a throw involved in my chin naw. There's a finish involved in my chin naw. There's not a, I grab your wrist and I, you know, do a Kota Gaesh. Um, turning heaven or whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's get into some of the traditional stuff. And this is uh, one of the questions I start out with and I ask a lot of the traditional martial artists because I think it's something like uh, what I, we were talking about, like the videos I wanted you to what we talked about offline. Um, what, it, what is traditional martial arts to you? And what does that mean? That, that whole term, traditional martial arts, what does that mean? So... The, um, my opinion of this is evolving um, because it's, I, I think in different eras, different groups and stuff, it means different things. In general, traditional martial arts to me means you're basically um, studying ancient combat. You're looking at combat that has evolved over the years as a fighting art. So whereas I'll, I'll use the term like traditional wushu versus tradi- or modern wushu or kung, kung fu wushu. Use it yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get you. Um, traditional versus modern. Traditional <clears throat> would be self-defense focused. Modern would be that it was performance focused. On the other hand, that applies in that scenario. You could look at things like MMA. MMA is modern. Um, or even the jujitsu that I did would be considered modern. Okay. Well, because it wasn't this only, it was it's somebody's take on a traditional system and it's just to work in today's society because we don't carry swords. You know, mm-hmm. people have guns, people have knives. So is that traditional or is that modern? Um, I think it's, it's a little, it's doing traditional martial arts with a modern approach. <laughs> I don't want to be that person who's like, you know, on a fence, but traditional martial arts to me is that there is a self-defense, there is a fighting focus on that. And self-defense and fighting are two very different things, but there is that combative focus that is at the core of what you do, not performance. And then people who are good nowadays or who can fight are people who apply modern concepts, whether it's modern like training methods, you know, using weights, all these things. And people did this back in the day, but a lot of people forget that. And now they look at mixing being open to taking other techniques that happened back in the day but then it got closed to where it's like my style versus your style versus if it fucking works why aren't you doing it <laughs> you know <laughs> right it made that a modern concept so again I think <clears throat> traditional martial arts with a modern focus of ap- application in modern times that's that would be traditional martial arts for me how would you how would you describe we were talking earlier about how you're, you shouldn't be a car, carbon copy of your teacher in, in a, applying that to that traditional um, term or mindset. 
What, what would you say to that? So, I mean, things are different. Society, societal shifts. I mean, you just you see things. I know um, you brought the term like Brazilian jiu-jitsu before. Like fighting on the ground a long time ago, not a thing. Nowadays, you'll see people fighting on the ground. It's it's definitely a mindset shift. Um, as far as instructors in traditional martial arts, you all, I think even in modern sport, combat sports, you always hear things. You should be better than your coach, your instructor. Hopefully, you take. You can take all of my successes. Like it took me this long to get here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can learn the basics. You can start here. You're not having to start where I started. I'm giving you at least a leg up. I'm trying to help you. I mean, it's the same thing that, you know, people do as like your parents, your parent does with a child. You know, like I hope my son can do better than I can because he can take what I've learned. That's, that's an ideal world. I think with, where you're not a carbon copy of your instructor because some lessons need to be learned the hard way. I'm definitely that guy that needs to be hands-on sometimes. And so I, I hope to take what I can get from my instructor, but it's always going to be under my perspective because my lens is always going to be different than theirs, whether it was societal, whether it was work. I mean, I'm a desk jockey here today. Like I'm a marketer for <laughs> a software company. I don't work, I don't work law I don't work military. On the on the flip side of the thing, I would this might get me in trouble as well. Most law enforcement, most military can't fight their way out of a paper bag. It's just it depends now, depends where they were put in the situation. Somebody who is in an area that is much more crime and is actually have to be hands-on, they don't have a choice. They have to evolve and get better. Same thing in the military. If you're in combat, you have to evolve and get better. Exactly. If you're in the military, you retire, you never see combat or anything. You're you not really any better than the concept. Combat. Same thing. I mean, law enforcement. So, uh, so that leads me into uh, when we're talking also about traditional martial arts. I think there's a misconception in, um, especially from the ju the jujitsu community or what we see in the, M the modern MMA community that calls a lot of our stuff, you know, fake dance, whatever, mainly, mainly dance because when we look at our forms and things. So do you see the, your form as when it's applied as A, B, C, D, or do you, you know, one, two, three, or are you learning an alphabet and this is, I'm making sentences and words and things. Talk to me a little bit about that. What you think? Um, definitely the latter. Um, people who do the former, Again, I'm, I'm going to go back there and maybe <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of slack or uh, flack for this is you can't fight. <laughs> if you say it's like, this is this, you can't probably can't apply it. Mm. It's like, you know, if I'm sparring and I'm, and I'm working, you know, I'm working a jab. Okay. I'm working a jab and I'm coming in with a cross, you know, um, in, in Tong Long, you know, I come in and I hit rather than retract like Western boxing, I hit and I grab and I come in those type of things. It's that flow. In forms now, and I will I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. Like, I half agree with those guys with that criticism of traditional martial artists. And I say it's our own damn fault because you get traditional martial artists, you inundate with, you know, there's 150 forms in my system. But it to be in, to, in all fairness, that person really isn't a traditional martial artist, they're a forms collector. A lot of times, I think we're traditional martial arts gets a, a bad rap is it's being represented by people who aren't traditional martial artists. They don't know what they're doing. They're not fighters to begin with. And I guarantee within five to 10 years, you're already starting to see it in like the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community. As more people study this, it's going to get watered down. You're going to, you already can see it here in Tucson. There are um, jiu-jitsu students that have, who have never done throws. They just train on the ground because that's what's popular. And that's what people expect when they go into a Brazilian jiu-jitsu school. And the other time, like I can name instructors here in town who these high-level BJJ guys, they can throw. They understand the roots of where this came from in old school BJJ versus modern. So our forms are the same way. Um, some of these forms are traditional. Some of them have a lot of value. They teach movement. And we have a term that you're probably familiar with Chinese martial arts, shinva. In a movement, if Michael Jordan may have good shin fog playing in basketball, me fucking suck. I'm the, you know, white boy can't jump um, doing this on there. Basketball, not coordinated. Martial arts, I 
hands on you, I'm probably going to throw you. you. Might you might say I have good shinfa on that? You know, wrestling hands. You might say I have good shinfa. I have good movement around that. Forms teach that because we can teach the sparring, but some of the flows to get from point A to point B, they require theories and elements, and that's what forms teach us. Like we look at. Um, I'll give you one example of apologies, my dogs. Something is trying to invade and they're defending. Um, <laughs> you see like this type of motion, you know, punch or, or um, block, punch or here. Uh, a lot of martial arts have it in there, basics and stuff in there. And what you get is you'll get instructor who will tell you it's a block and a punch. It's A and B, one and two. And it, it could be, but it's the concept of, you know, moving, deflecting an attack, grabbing, returning one of your own, and you're flowing through there. It's like, it's like again, I go back to English. I can teach you a couple of words. If I say a sentence, like, I mean, traditional wushu is good or bad, whatever. If I just teach you those words, it doesn't make sense. On the other hand, if I teach you that sentence, there's a lot to unpack in that sentence. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at forms is, so me personally, I probably, I teach on the lower end of the number of forms. I probably teach four or five, and sometimes they'll come and go. They're not mm -hmm. that important. They're important to teach a concept, and different ones teach that better than others. And I may be on a wrestling kit. Well, this form doesn't do a lot of wrestling. Let's insert a tool that does, that helps that training. So that's what forms are for me. I think they are important to understanding um, Japanese and Chinese martial arts. They teach a flow, a movement that you just can't get from just sparring. If you just spar, you end up in an area where everybody ends up in that same area of sparring. Like if we just throw you in, you find what works and you don't necessarily go beyond that because it works and it's all about um, self um, preservation. Well, I know this works. I'm not going to try something else. I'm not going to go this. Um, we saw this in modern MMA, um, I don't know, five years ago. All of a sudden, what was it? Anderson Silva knocked somebody out with a front kick. And all of a sudden, people are like, oh, front kick, it's traditional. And it's like, it's a fucking front kick. It's day <laughs> one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> knees, like Mantis has flying knees. That's not, that's not just a, um, a Muay Thai thing. You see it in the form Feng Bu, which is probably one of the most famous Mantis boxing sets out there. It's in the first road. You know, you come in, you grab, you jump, boom, it's there. If there's no making it up, we're not putting it in there. It is there. Um, well, there's that's a like taking a technique. It, like if I do this technique, I do a style called Kao Shao Feng Zhu, and we have a technique that comes in like this and pulls and hits. It's got like with the grab. You can say this is an arm break, like I'm actually this this is the grabbing the arm and, and turning it in at the elbow to snap the elbow, or am I just touching your your attack and then sliding off the attack to hit you up in the neck? It's same concept of there's and many answers about forms, and I think you understand this. Obviously, because we're talking about this and we agree, is you know I can teach you to fight without forms, right? I can teach you to fight in probably about like you know maybe not amazing, but basic fighting, you know, maybe an hour, maybe 30 minutes, just some basic techniques. You can teach you a few punches, few, maybe kicks, maybe not kicks because kicks are, you know, you know it, it takes a little more, but, and you have your basics, just enough to, you know, at least to be a little dangerous, a little bit of self-defense. Forms aren't that. And that's where I think this martial, traditional martial arts make this mistake is they think a form is the end all be all, you know, it isn't. It's there to support your basics. It's there to support your theories. It's there to give you a way to train advanced concepts versus if you and I just come in there, you know, touch gloves, we're probably always going to do the same stuff, especially if we only train together. Now, mm -hmm. how do I train this other stuff? I get a new training partner. How do you train this with a form? You get a new form. You work with these new pieces. Now, you don't keep adding it like a form collector. You go back and you look. If they're just like training next methods. Like you may have this way you work the bag. It's a combo. That's your form. Come me in there. Just flow. That's a, that's a good way to put it too when you're looking at and looking at comparisons. So one of the things that I think the argument would be looking at it from the actual question is when what I hear, this is what I hear when I watch a lot of the videos is that, you know, they go, 
oh, it's a dance, it doesn't work. Um, it's this misty, what mysticism, whatever their whatever terminology they use. But when we look at it and apply it, I'm like, that's not me, and that's not the people that taught me, and that's not the people I train with because we don't look at it like that. And it's well, it's more of a, martial arts. Though. You look at you look at a traditional Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy who knew who knew how to stand up and have maybe with some still has some of that self-defense left in there where it's not just commercialized rolling on the ground he's going to look at that guy who's now coming out of a commercialized school that's a black belt factory because they know they can make money off of this mm -hmm. he's going to look down on that guy because that you only are showing this much of my art because it made you money and this person is not really that great and that unfortunately that was the success of martial of traditional martial arts i mean but you had Bruce Lee, you had Chuck Norris, you had Bill Wall, you had all these guys who knew what they were doing. And you had these guys that would go to various foreign wars, learn this much of something. They come back and now they're wearing their peacock belts and, and their, <laughs> their chest up and they teach a few things and they're teaching a watered down martial art. But now that there's, there's thousands of them, there's millions you know, of practitioners of this, but how many actually do it? How many under, even have an inkling of what they're doing? And that is, it's a small percentage. And I, and again, these other ones, they're going to get there. Like Brazilian jiu-jitsu will get there. It's already getting there, um, you know, with people who don't get there. We just, it's already there. We, we were there first. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is much more, it's more of a modern creation. So with traditional um, martial arts, they've been around for a while. We've had a lot more years to produce bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that gets me into my next question. Yeah. So I can't challenge you. I can't say, you know, yes. hey John, hey Scott, let's go try our martial arts. If I want to go to the if jail, that's I can do that. Right. Um, we don't have, and that's one of the things that I love about like the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and modern martial arts, all these grappling tournaments that come up where they can use they may not I don't agree with the rule set to where it punishes slams and, and throws and some of these mm -hmm. they can just do but they have a way to test this. It's like Wing Chun, for example. I have a lot of respect for Wing Chun because they found a way to at least practice, you know, their sticky hands, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. they call it. And they found a way to do sparring. How many schools in your area and my area do zero sparring or when they do spar, it looks the same as every other style because mm -hmm. they put latex gloves on, they jump around like this and, and they do their kicking because Somebody never taught them how to use the training they have. It, when I, so, and to that, when you start looking at what, we, what we're learning, so uh, for instance, like when I train Wing Chun, if you look at 70% of the techniques, they're all attacking the neck. I mean, it's just where they're going. You know, the, the way we angle the fist, you know, we're only going to do that if we're hitting you like straight in the sternum, but 90% of the time, they're angling that fist so they can get it right into that area to hit you in the neck. Um, if I do like bong sao uh, with a chop, where am I chopping you? The side of your head? No, I'm chopping you your neck. And so that's the, the idea is that when you start looking at how are we able to use these techniques and how much force can you apply? Well, I don't want to hurt my par partner that I'm training with. And also uh, when you look at it from the aspect of that, so when it's looked at by MMA and some of the modern stuff that you see going on, because they're used to hitting each other, putting on the gloves, going in there, rolling around on the mat, they're actually able to go at a, a higher degree of percentage of, of, of you know, like 70%. I'm able to go 70% because I have the tap out. You know, I, I'm going to know when I'm getting that lock on. I'm going to be able to resist or whatever. But there is no, there's no, it's either I tap you or I strike you in the neck. There's no... Well, they, middle they, I mean, credit where credit's due, they found a better way to train what they do. Right. <clears throat> and at the same time, you have, um, like, I think a lot of people give Sanda shit. Um, and they're like, oh, you know, it's Chinese MMA. And you're right, they did, they did, uh, the government, this is, this is, this is politicized, you know, they did yeah. create, that being said, it is still traditional martial arts and you can train traditional martial arts. There are certain self-defense things. Like I always, I hate this argument. I get the traditional martial artists always say that. Well, it's because I can't poke you in the eyes. I can't kick you in the nuts. I can't hit you in the face. Well, okay, let's step back. Those are legitimate techniques for self-defense. 
for street fighting. This over here is sport. You can't have an apples to apples conversation between the two because you're also a professional athlete. Perfect. I've been doing martial arts since 89 and you put a football like linebacker from the NFL in front of me. Dude is probably going to take me out. Like, you know, this dude, he's used to getting hit. Um, the, my, my assistant instructor, the guy who's probably trained with me the longest right now, um, guy foot fights full contact stick fighting. Probably top five guy in the U S and I, I will say, so <clears throat> You Kali, he doesn't do a screamer. He does, he does a thing called SCA. It's it's reenactment. It is medieval. Oh yeah, I've, did, I got a friend that does that stuff. They like, crazy. They get hit by sticks this fucking big, and he's not one of these fat guys who just kind of waddles out there and just bangs on the. No, him and his group, they research the manuals. They've come back. They've done other things. He will go over, this is the reason you want to do a snap this way. You try to come at this guy with, you know, whether it's like this, like all these little like drills. And they'll crack you across the head one, two, the movement. It's just the angles. Why? Because it's different. The way he's had to train, they're going full contact with these. This is not like in these modern competitions where the person's like wearing this packing blanket coat and they wear a fencing thing and they have these tiny little screaming sticks where they can tap, 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 a million times because those are tiny little sticks. Yes, I can do some damage. What he's used to is different. And the guy is good. And you put a stick in, he becomes a very dangerous man. But the thing is, it applies directly to traditional martial arts. Um, I learned a lot of weapons. I teach weapon combat. Um, and my weapon combat. By the way, I saw that sword you have that you've got going on. I like that. Which one? It's you. Did you develop some kind of like training sword looking thing, like a straight sword? No. So we actually. Get I saw the, a picture of it on your site. From so the, yeah, from the Hema community, they created a gin. They <clears> created <throat> a, a practice gin. It, it is absolutely amazing. Um, so we train with that. Like, so we're not a kung fu school who trains with. We don't do the spring still shit. We don't do the wooden <laughs> full on HEMA gear, like that protects your head, the full on fencing glove. Um, these are like co full contact gloves. And so I, I learned a bunch of weapons. Uh, we only teach a couple. So we teach and, and they have direct representation to modern times. Um, so we teach a short stick, which is, you know, your Kali, Eskrima, short stick, mm -hmm. stick fighting. We, um, that, the way you use that is identical except for one's bludgeoning one's one's um cutting slashing it's a broadsword it's a dowel okay there the movements are similar the concept of throwing over your head of pulling here people who don't understand it they do these really big turns and twirls to make it look they don't understand keeping it close and, and getting this whipping motion we teach a medium-sized stick which is almost like your old school walking stick. You see with like mm -hmm. Bar Jitsu when swords went out of fashion in Europe and you had walking stick techniques that were developed off of straight sword, which was a thrusting weapon and also mm -hmm. cracks to the wrist and small bones. That's your gym. The movements apply, again, bludgeoning versus thrusting. Um, we teach, this is where people may just, if people agree with me up to that point and they disagree here, we teach a staff on there. Uh, we teach the Ch obviously Chinese. I don't do European quarter staff stuff, um, but Chinese staff, spear, Quan Dao, um, monk spade. Mm. There's there's subtle differences. It's all the same shit. Yeah. Um, we teach how to use a long pole. It's a pole on. It's the concepts are there. The blade may have been different. Well, again, die on that hill. We don't have we don't have bladed halberds and stuff today that you're defending. You have a shovel. It's the same content. It goes poke. It, it you know, we bash him with it. Um, similar. Yes, there's kind of cool things you could do with a rake. I teach you how to use a pole. You're going to be okay. And then we do stuff with like ropes or chains. And I and I do knife stuff. I don't, but that's really it. And I don't I don't get involved in gun defense and things like that. Uh, do you believe that that is true that uh, MMA has exposed traditional martial arts to not work or, or have issues? So I would. There, I would say it's it's really spot on, but they they keep they're saying martial arts. That's the problem. You're exposing traditional martial artists, 
individuals, individuals who can't walk. And there is a large sum of those guys. You're looking, I mean, up until recently, you know, we're coming out of, I mean, there was the Kung Fu area in the 60s, you know, Taekwondo in the 70s. Um, I think it was karate and then I don't know. Um, but, you know, we're coming out of that era of BJJ to where now there's so many BJJ schools out there. It's what's out there. It's what, if you want to do martial arts, if you're doing jujitsu, I can say jujitsu and you don't even think of Japanese jujitsu. You don't think of judo. You think of Brazilian yeah. It's because there. So when, when you say <clears throat> traditional martial arts, I will say, yes, it's exposed an element of traditional martial artists that cannot fight that do not know their shit. It did not expose traditional martial arts as ineffective. Traditional martial arts is very effective. I mean, Puyo, he's one of those schools. I never met the guy, went out there. We didn't touch hands like this or anything like that. You know, we came out there and, um, and we fought. And in my school, same thing, you know, like we're, we're willing to work with you on those things and show the differences. We're not, now I will say this is very thankful for that because comments like that piss guys like you off, they piss guys like me off. I think I'm, I'm, I'm a little over it, but um, it pisses traditional martial artists off. And it should, but it should, it should cause us to look inward and fix our own house, get our own house, get our shit together. Is like, it's not a BJJ versus traditional martial arts. It's a traditional martial artist versus traditional martial artists that don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know, we have allowed this problem to exacerbate and just, just to grow and get bigger over the years where these guys aren't called out. They're, you know, oh, you know what? This is Kung Fu. This is Kung Fu. This is Kung Fu. This is. Okay, great. Well, then we get this guy. Well, Kung Fu means hard work. Okay, great. You know, and then you get these guys who. They're teaching weird techniques. They're doing weird, flashy stuff. And we've allowed the village idiot to stay on his podium to where all of a sudden now everybody else thinks that we're all the village idiot. Right. Because we have so many of them out there. Um, and those guys, they, I mean, we really should almost be thinking like guys to expose them because what happens, like you got the first example, you got the example, like all of a sudden, oh no, this stuff, but Wing Chun's okay. Yeah, but, to a point. Taekwondo <laughs> are okay because they saw one of their own do it and they saw it's effective. And I don't think you can judge these guys mm. by not thinking it's effective because they haven't seen it be, be effective. The problem is the current, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but the current avenue to rank whether an art was effective is the UFC. Okay, and it's been the biggest one. We don't have one fighting, which is they're, they're amazing. You have all these. This, this is a this is a Western issue. This is not an Eastern issue. One fighting. These guys. You have people who mix in their traditional martial arts. They do this um, in Asia, and they have these things, and they push that. But you also have guys like in the UFC. I mean, if you ever watch it, all UFC fighters, with the exception. Who, who go and they figure out a traditional technique and they come out there, this magical front kick, this some of this Wing Chun, you can see this guy use it in there, this wrestling, Ronda Rousey, the girl has amazing throws. No shit, she's a fucking Olympic judo player. Um, and that's because, and she brought that in there. She brought that caliber in there. The problem is, she, she Olympic judo player. What avenue is there in traditional martial arts to pull that caliber of an athlete out of? It's not there. Mm -hmm. It's not there. The Wing Chun guys go do and they do their thing. Some of these guys, they do continuous sparring here. They do that. There is no avenue that traditional martial arts have set for themselves to take themselves to that level to compete on that world stage of, of MMA. Instead, you get these guys like the jackasses in China, Tai Chi master. Okay, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fight this guy. He's a professional athlete. You're not. End of story right there. Yeah. You've never trained this. The only person that you've maybe ever sparred with was your classmates who also can't fight. Because <laughs> you told them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that, that's my thing is I don't, I try, you know, when I first heard it, I got annoyed. Afterwards, I brushed it off because it's like, you're right. 
It, but the thing is, the part that you're wrong on, you're right that traditional martial arts doesn't work. What you're leaving off in that sentence is traditional martial artists who can't fight does that though that stuff doesn't work. Traditional martial arts work. I mean, MMA is based these round kicks, all these that's not a new technique. You know, some arts don't have Mantis has it. You'll see it um in total. Um it's right there in the um, what is it, second, eh, third road. There's a round kick. It's a lead leg round kick. Kyokushin guys do that. You mm -hmm. see these techniques. Um, Sanda, when it pulls some of these things out, punches and kicks, traditional martial arts have done it. They just forgot how to use it. A lot of these guys have forgot. Other people, Diamonds in the Rough, Tony Puyo, they still know how to use some of these things. There's a lot of good Mantis guys out there. I mean, you have Brendan Tunks in Australia. The guy is really down to earth. Lots of fun to talk to. Oh, I should say down to earth. We, all of the colorful guys, we're all colorful. We have a little bit of egos. Um, yeah, but dude. really good dude. Like if you want to talk to a high level, he's fought full contact. He's lived in China. He speaks it. You got you get other guys like Germany, Thomas Holt. Again, another guy. He does the dog brother stuff. The full kind. He done like a three section staff. I may not, I mean, we may have differences of how you do so, but at least you have guys out there who are taking their traditional stuff. In, Was that his in, name? Thomas Holtman. He also went by Kung, um, Kung Fu Dog. That's He's the guy. So that's... you'll find, like those guys, you'll find like Tony Puyo, like those guys. And some of these aren't big names. Some of their, I'm sure Choi Le Foot has them. I'm, I'm sure Wing Chun has them. I'm sure a lot of these guys have those. Um, internet personalities. Master Wong, he's a Wing Chun guy. <laughs> and he, he's, he's funny, funny. He cursed, he does a lot of stuff. But at the same time, he's not just trying to just do this. He's up there with boxers. He's working. He's he's pushing the envelope on what he does to show that it's it's effective. <clears throat> that's the I mean, all that's waiting for is just somebody is a breakout star to come out there. I mean, Karate, you got um, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, you have Leo Chida. They're there to represent karate. But if you look at what they're using, they're using basic techniques. They use some of the movement. I mean, it's all the same mountain. We all climb up the same one. There's just to be subtle differences. There just isn't, in, at least in the Western world, there isn't a representative of traditional Chinese martial arts. So I think it's what they've seen, yeah, it doesn't work. Because they haven't seen, you know. Would you say it's movie? hard? Would you say it's because when you're, because again, this gets into my my argument. This is my argument with the whole thing. There's sports, and there's reality. And what I mean by reality is, I'm learning this, doing this, not for a sport purpose. I'm doing this so if someone approaches me, I'm going to take them out the most lethal, lethal way that I can. To protect myself whether that stopped them or killed them two different completely different things but what you what i think you what i see and what's make it what i guess when you say pisses me off what i see is this they're trying to make it the same and it's not the same your bbj your mma is a freaking sport you guys are great at it i would probably not if i got into your box i'm not going to survive if i put you in my box you're not going to survive. Well, and I think that's one of the things. You, you just got to compare the two. I mean, you take, a, you take guys who... Um, my, my, I, opened the, I opened this whole thing with the story. I think we recorded part about the guy, Krav Maga, which is supposed to be like mm -hmm. his beauty self-defense. Um, we'll talk about opinions on that <laughs> at their time. Um, but you got, it's like these things. And like you get this guy, he does, I put a knee on his neck. And it's like, I'm not doing that to say that. I pump myself up. It's like... Here you have somebody who is trying that in a different element. If you, I would say um, a lot of, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, if you're not competing at that level, you're no better than the traditional martial artist. You go to a traditional tournament because you have mm -hmm. average Joe versus average Joe. Mm -hmm. You just can't compare a professional athlete with a non-professional athlete. It has nothing to do with whether I can strike you in the eyes, the throat, whatever. Right. It has to do with a professional athlete 
the rule set I think is irrelevant. Um, I put a traditional martial artist in a ring with a UFC guy and say, okay, you can poke him in the eyes, you can kick him in the nuts, throat, and all that stuff. He's still going to beat the fuck out of you. And, and it has nothing to do with the rules. You have a trained athlete in a non trained You have somebody who spends the majority of their time sparring. And this was proven, not even modern. Look at Professor Kano, Jigoro Kano, mm-hmm. founder of judo. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and judo is a school of jujitsu. It mm-hmm. was what the, he was able to beat all the traditional at, in the day, which mm-hmm. judo is traditional, the modern traditional style. All the other schools of jiu-jitsu, because he found a way to train the techniques that was more effective. His randori allowed them to do the thing. He took out all the, the eye gouges and all those things because they couldn't be trained regularly, effectively, and still had partners. And he was able to beat the snot out of all these traditional jiu-jitsu sty- styles with his new jiu-jitsu judo because they were able to do the shit they trained. And I think that's the that's what we run into. We got to remember when people are trying to compare these. It's it, it, There's two factors. The rules, I don't think, has anything to do with it. Now, there are places like a grappler's quest where you can't slam somebody. Okay, well, that's obviously a biased rule. The rules that say you can't eye gouge, you can't get them in the nuts, the throat, it would play a little bit of a difference. It's not going to make, it's not going to make a big change. What does make a change is Professional athlete, non-professional athlete, um, somebody who spars regularly and trains with multiple um, opponents at, a, at this level, somebody who spars with the occasional person in their class to their own little rule set that they have. And that's, again, that's, that's just my thoughts on that. I think where traditional martial artists, where we can learn from that is don't be afraid to spar outside of your right. Your, if you're a Wing Chun guy, go play with a Tom Wong guy. You go got to. With a boxer. You got to. I, I'm a, a firm proponent of that because, okay, what what basically killed the Spartans? Because they continuously did the same shit the same way all the time. And then their enemies studied that and go, this is the weakness. This is how we're going to attack them. And they wound up getting taken out. Traditional That's martial arts is starting to do that, though, nowadays. Everybody has a chip on their shoulder. And all of a sudden... If you are a legit school, and this is a popular one, they teach Sanda. Traditional martial arts are using that marketing term, which is a blanking term. And mm-hmm. I, I call it bullshit if you say it's a style. No, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a style of kickboxing that allows certain elements. And, but you see people doing it. I've been guilty. I'll use the term Sanda. Like, okay, what type of spar are you guys? We're going to Sanda style spar. You know? We're going to allow punching, kicking. We're going to allow wrestling. Okay? We're going to do it. You're seeing people do stuff like that because they want to accurately represent their arts and it's pushing them to that. Now you still have a lot of people who, what type of spar I do? I put my latex spar master red or blue gloves on my foot, my little boots, my head, my head that doesn't protect anything in my face. Um, and I hold my hands like this and, and they spar like that. And that's fine. But they're not part of the solution. The part of the solution are the guys that are like your master Wong. Mm. You know, he's like, I, you know, I've never t- trained with you, but I'll just go by what you told me. You, your Thomas Holtman's, your Brendan Tunks. I mean, these guys have students who fought full content. They trained at stuff like <clears throat> your, heroes, your guys like me. We go out there and we'll do some of this. Um, so all of a sudden in Arizona, hey, we've had it two years. I haven't been able to make it because it keeps happening on events when I have other things. We have a, a Sonda competition that's happening in up in Phoenix. I'm hoping I get to go this year. Like little things like that. This is a way for pe- traditional martial artists to get out there and test what they do. But that's a part of what, like when I teach my students, is uh, because we don't necessarily we have Sonda, but again, it, how many of those things are around so when i was in okinawa i did k like k1 style amateur kickboxing is k1 kickboxing and yeah. the reason why i did that is like okay where can i put myself at that someone's putting pressure on me yeah well not just shit work can you think under pressure because it i think the majority of the shit we're taught works but can you apply it under pressure right and there. if you can't think under pressure 
or have that where your mind is, I'm not excited. I'm a little excited, but I'm not overly excited. I'm able to think and reason. I'm able to see what's going on. That, that's the thing. And if you don't put yourself under that kind of pressure, like they talk about pressure, like uh, one of the other arguments that you'll get from the MMA community is we don't pressure test for shit. Well, it, it, how we some pressure test. Do. Yeah, some people don't. But when I, when I say true traditional martial artists, the, you know, that's the difference. That's what I'm also trying to do with this whole thing is to pinpoint like these are real traditional martial artists. This is not our Mac Kung Fu or Mac Dojo type stuff or the, uh, what you, what's the term you used uh, about forms, a form collector, you know, yeah. someone that actually is doing this stuff. So we have um, a term we've used for years. We call them paper tigers. Yeah, it's paper not, dragons. Yeah, that's not, what we call them. It's not an old concept. I mean, there were those guys who just did show. I mean, a lot of them came out of Hong Kong. Is they do because you know how do I make money? I turn my stuff into performance. There's a lot of tricks. You there are cool tricks that can earn me some money, and I'm not mad at them for doing that. But you just got to understand those are two things. It's not a blanket term for right. you know traditional martial artists. And that's what, what like one of the questions is is uh, you know the cross training. That's what you just mentioned. Is I believe that, and I think you just you said it on the head cross training and you are a cross trained martial artist and I guess some of the arguments would be well that's mixed martial arts well I think all martial arts is mixed in some way shape or exactly. form if it's if if you've, martial arts is mixed martial arts if you right. were a fighter and I think all lineages have this mm -hmm. um, in Mantis um, you have those guys you go back and it's like well this person did this and mm -hmm. then they train but they only trained a short time but they, but he was a fighter or he was a bodyguard well those guys a lot of times they had backgrounds in other arts and they trained this and then the story or myth, because a lot of it's myth, is he chose to focus on and now he's a famous Tong Long guy. Well, these were fighters who did what, the, you know, that's what they did. So they came in there, you know, it got a name, it got associated with something. Like I'm one of those people like, so I do marketing by trade. And so I'm always thinking about, because it does, it does kind of bug me. It's like, you know, what we do is legit. I don't want somebody thinking, you know, I'm not going to go sign up for classes with them because I don't want to do bullshit martial arts. So it's like, is it better to say what we do is traditional Kung Fu? Is it better to say Kung Fu? Is it, mm -hmm. is it Chinese boxing? Is it Mantis boxing? Is it praying Mantis Kung Fu? Is it traditional Wushu? What is it? I don't know if there is an answer, but well, it's is. trying to get past those stereotypes and you're trying to not associate yourself with the bullshit mainstream traditional martial arts because mainstream traditional martial arts is your mcdojo mm. they are that guy who and some of these guys like i genuinely think they thought their shit could work even up until they get knocked out yeah that was a bullshit excuse where the rules were set against me no you just can't fight there's nothing wrong with that a block is a block go train if you know, my whole thing is, is if you, if, if I were to go into a, an MMA tournament, I'm going to hold my own as best I can. But at the end of the day, if I get knocked out, I get knocked out because I fucked up. That's a, that's just, that's the plain honesty of it because I can still block. Can I move my head? Is that something that we do in, in our martial arts? Should we just stand here like a robot? And, no. Well, and I'll, tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, like, you know, Puyo, he asked me, this was actually a couple of weeks ago. I had actually never heard this and I'm, I've been around for a little while. I thought it was really funny is, you know, I've never started, I, I, we were just talking and the subject came up of, so I've never done Bagua. Um, and I asked him like, and I hope this, that's not going to get him in trouble or me in trouble, whatever. Um, what, what he's like, you know, Chief Puyo, you know, what do you think of Bagua? He thinks like, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a 20, a 20 year, 20 year indoor style. Ooh. I'd never heard it. He's like, you haven't heard that before? He's like, yeah. You have to train 20 years indoor just to be even basically competent when you go outdoors and fight. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And it's, he's making a generalization. He's, he's a funny yeah. guy. Um, and I agree with him. And I think that's, that's the problem with a lot of traditional martial arts is, because I've heard that before. As I went to seminars, you know, well, traditionally, we're more sophisticated than modern MMA. 
it takes longer to be proficient with this. Um, I've been um, to seminars and performances. And I watch this guy. And I oh, you know, somebody's like, it's that's really awesome. This guy is doing it at his age. He doesn't look that great, but I mean, at his age, he looks pretty good. And the comment is that'd be true if he didn't look the same way as he did 30 years ago in his prime. And that's and that's not just what it is. Like if you know there's a hole in what you do, go fucking fix it. I am very blessed that I have multiple um, codexes, lenses to look at what I do. When, when I originally did tradition, um, when I started with like Kung Fu and, I, and we did the performance stuff and then we moved away from it, I had a filter to filter stuff in and filter bullshit out. Yeah, it was called Jiu-Jitsu. It was called, it was Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. It was called Matsunoru Goshin Jitsu. Basically that means Matsuno self-defense because the whole family name before they changed it due to um, anti-Japanese sentiment in World War II was Matsuno. It means pine field, um, pine forest. So that was, this was just their, when Vincent decided he wanted to focus on his, ver his version of jujitsu from Donzambu Jiu-Jitsu Okazaki, he chose to call it Hulk family self-defense. And it had the concept, the early concepts his father brought in with Kaju Kimbo and this is it. This is what works in the street. This is the stuff that he was able to verify in his law enforcement days. You know, back in the 60s, back in the 50s, but these things coming in there, 70s. This is the stuff that he was able to verify on the streets that worked. And I mean, he, he would tell a story. And Puyo has a bunch of these stories too, which is always yeah. funny. Because um, I think nowadays it's very, very frowned upon. Mm. But colorful characters... When they leave, I don't know, I'm not a law enforcement. Vincent said, you know, when he retired, he showed him his phone. And he said it was like this thick with complaints of excessive force. Really? Um, and because he would have, <laughs> like where him and this other guy, um, God, I'm trying to think what his name was, um, another officer, they'd go out there and like at the start of the day, they could go on their beat and they'd say, you know, I'm going to try this. If we get into a confrontation, I'm going to try this. And in one of the days he came in, he's like, I'm going to do Sionagi. I'm going to do the shoulder throw. He goes in there. We're in Arizona. It's hot as fuck here. Um, he grabs the guy, goes to throw him. Boom. <laughs> and then realizes he has a ripped jacket in his hand. <laughs> I tag his perp, his guy behind him. Holy shit. What's he do? He's like, I back kicked that guy. I threw a side kick and knocked him over. He's like, this is stop. Because he was all pumped about that. And you see these little anecdotes like that. And I respect that. Trying it out, figuring out if it works. I may not do every this thing out there. I think striking like this is the dumbest shit you will ever do. Break because one of the things that I, and I see people train their wrist. And I will see people that train up for something and I will like, oh, they train their wrist. And I'm like, why? If you're watching, here's the thing is, if you're training a form, you're training a traditional martial art. And you and if, if you're doing something and it's like, and there is a better way to do that that is obvious. You are training the wrong goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. It is not that obscure way of striking. Like you're punching him in the chest. You know, I'm going to hit him in the solar plexus. I'm going to knock the wind out of him. Punch him in the head. It'll be fine. It's like your computer, you know, 50-50 chance. <laughs> not to it out. Don't be training these forms, whatever it is, at their fucking chest. I don't care if you're going for point 189, secret death, you know, squirrel technique. Don't do that. <laughs> Punch you with the fucking head. It works. <laughs> you know, move their hands. Put something, create a striking lane that you can go to that they can't hit you. Move out of the way. It's mm. that simple. And a lot of us forget this when we train traditional martial arts because we want it to be Shaw Brothers martial arts. Hell, I want it to be Shaw Brothers. <laughs> but it's not. So stop. <laughs> put that fluff in. I like that. I like that. Fluff. I like that uh, <laughs> phrase. The way you said it. We all want it to be. Yeah, we do. But it's not. I do. I, I started more <laughs> to be that way. I still want it to be that way. It's not. But you know what? I can tell people like that. You will find those cool moments where it is like that. Um, I, you know, I've not been in a lot of fights. I've not had a lot of you know confrontations where I've gotten to use this. I've gotten to use certain techniques on the street and when it works, oh my God, it's magic. It's so cool. It's like, a, it's like Christmas. You light up like the, the Christmas. 
like this work. And that's cool. That's when you get your Shaw Brothers element. But if you think you're going to stand here with one arm behind your back doing this shit, you know, rattlesnake style, it ain't going to work. Punch him in the face. Work on your um, work on your timing. Work on positioning your partner. Work on angling, and you'll find all of a sudden your traditional martial arts shit works. So there's a Tong Long guy, or he's—I don't think he's Tong Long guy. I don't know who he is, but he's a BBJ guy. And I'm trying to remember where he's out of. But he—he he always has like it's the videos. He has like a praying mantis on his like uh, skin tight T-shirt. He talks about it. And apparently, he studied um chinese and whatever and he's talking, Jay, 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 talking randy brown that's i think it, randy brown and uh he's one of the ones i have like i like what you're doing i like what your your way you're approaching your bbj by putting some of these things in and looking at in the principles because again what's more important the concept of it or that i'm you know like this <laughs> to me it's always the concept so he's taking a a way to approach it but he's he's doing revisionist history and that's so, what i have a problem with like yeah. wait whoa, 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 time out you're telling me that catch him uh kuang chow was be just because he was famous for grabbing people that's why he was called catch hands but he really only used catch hands to get into jujitsu wait a minute whoa time out time out time out time out you added yeah. something in that's not even there so by its absence makes it true no. So I think with that one, so I've only talked to Randy once. Um, he actually, he, he recommended Puyo to me way back in the day. Um, is he because a Randy, Tong Long guy? Is, it, is yeah. he a Tong Long guy? Okay. Randy, well, so Randy and I actually have a lot in common. Um, so Randy tr trained under Joshua Grant and Yao Li, who, which was my intro guy in there. And, Randy, and he, he moved to traditional and he, and he found Puyo and he trained a little bit with Puyo. He went out, I, I don't know how often to train in San Diego. Again, I, I'm not. I'm not going to speak towards the training. Um, I'll speak towards the modern videos because you, you you put yourself on the internet. You certainly um, right. there's a you know you're, it's up for discussion. I think Randy had the right idea. The problem is, I think he took it too far. Um, is, That's who I'm uh, Yeah, Randy Brown. Okay. Videos, and I wholeheartedly disagree with. 99.9% .9 of what he says. So, and this, and this is not so much, I, I don't think he, I don't think he's a bad martial artist by any means. I think he's probably, he's decent at what he does. I feel that what he does is Brazilian jujitsu and he's trying, and he's calling it Tong Long because he's trying to justify his Tong Long through Brazilian jujitsu concepts. Like we have things called keywords, which are, they're not fancy. They're just formulas. Um, Things like to enter, things like, you know, the idea of, you know, a soft, which, you know, you like tingeing, the same thing you do in judo, which if you're feeling mm -hmm. your partner. Um, concepts What'd you like call it? Tingeing? Tingeing. Um, yeah, I probably yeah. heard the hell out of that. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's, it's listening energy. It's, you know, right, listening. You do it, yeah, chai chi, all those things. Um, we have concepts like that. And I've seen he did a, a video series on, on those on those concepts and he tied them into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu things. That's where I think the issue came in. Like I watched the videos and again, this is just my personal opinion. I, I'm nothing against anybody like that. Um, I watch it and I'm like, and who am I to say this? So again, this is my opinion. It's not Mantis. What you're doing is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with a small, small part of Tony Puyo's curriculum and or and I shouldn't say in curriculum Puyo's worse than I am like he switches his curriculum up all the time which is the sign of somebody who's constantly learning is right. they change shit um that gets back to my, what's traditional and that's so yeah uh, and it's, uh, it, it's, 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 it's speculative and so with Randy's videos I see when I watch it through my lens of a guy who does Tong Long and does Jiu Jitsu, not Brazilian. I did a little bit of Brazilian, but I did some Judo, but I mostly do Japanese Jiu Jitsu, which is basically Judo, um, depending on who trained it or teaches it. I see a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy who's calling his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Mantis Kung Fu. And 
he's and, he, and he's trying to tie in all these Chinese elements, like you said, almost like writing history to fit what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and like so, and I always I come back to the question when I watch when I watch it is I'm like, why why don't you just call it Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Like just just call it Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And you know, call it a day. I mean, I watched. He he had a thing where he created a form, and it was it was a hot mess. Um, I was watching this. I, I we've never touched hands. We've never met in person, so I don't know. I'm like, you know, I'm just watching this. And from my perspective, I don't see Mantis boxing there. I see Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with some basic strikes that were trying to tie or anchor in traditional mantis concepts or Chinese concepts. Again, my sole opinion on that, I have, there are lots of guys out there that put their stuff up and more power to them. I put some of my stuff up there and I'm sure it, people have their opinions on it, which is fine. Yeah, will, yeah. Um, but the, like there's there's other people out there. I saw there's a, there was a guy, Jake Mace, this guy probably made a shit ton of money off of YouTube early days because I looked at the subscription subscribers and everybody talked shit about Jake. Um, then amazing, amazing athlete. Seems like a very nice guy too. Never met the guy. His mantis is utter shit. It is from, it's from one of these McDojo styles that, you know, I learned a mantis form. I learned a tiger form. I learned whatever it was. It was made up. And now I know mantis. I know tiger. Mantis isn't a form. It's not a form. It's a style. So you don't, learning a form, you don't know style. There is no fucking mantis speak. There's none of this shit in there. But again, you're an internet personality. So that's fine. You're, you're, you're doing this inner. I don't know whether he really was doing entertainment value, but those are the things that you see. And I think different people will find that path that they work on. I don't try to justify my Kung Fu by my Jiu Jitsu. I try to pressure test it because as a Kung Fu guy, you come to me and you show me a throw in your system or whatever. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll borrow the things that, you know, uh, my current um, trainer, Puyo does, show me. Let's try it out. And I have a throwing background. I'm definitely competent. I'm definitely we're going to be able to see if this is bullshit or not. Um, same thing with striking and some of these other ones, you know. You're, you're going to see that. But some people will just kind of push stuff and push it. And it's like, stop, just stop. Stop. They have governing bodies. You got to remember that too. Like right. the modern BJJ, for the most part, they have, and yes, there's different families, but they've been able to largely keep it pure. I don't want to say pure because that's a terrible term. Um, they've largely been able to keep the caliber high. The concept mm -hmm. is like if you move up, a, if you made a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, they should be it. They're, I'll put money that they can definitely handle themselves on that they will probably mop the floor with most people who don't do it. And we don't have that type. I mean, I shouldn't say we. A lot of traditional martial artists do not have that sort of a unified expectation of pressure testing. And part of this is cultural because of where the, what the martial art has had to go through as far as being, you know, a lot of people say there's no traditional in China. There's, there's plenty of traditional still in China. I've been there, yeah, there is. And it's just those things that it fled. But again, the art has been through all these different things. Again, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, a little bit more modern. It's been through these things. Ten years from now, it'll change. You're going to see pieces like that. And then the same thing, but the part that I will stick on, and I, I will die on the heel, is Jiu-Jitsu came from this over here. And it was influenced by these events. Chinese Kung Fu, or I'll just say Tong Long, was influenced by these events. These two are not the same. There may be a tiny bit of crossover, but you have a largely striking, tripping, pushing, shoving system over here. You have a very hardcore grappling system over here. There might be some similar concepts because there's only so many ways the body can move, mm -hmm. but they are very different systems. Me, when I do throws, like even my students, like they'll watch. There are three, um, basically, if you look at stuff that I teach when I do a throw, there is something that um, originated from jujitsu. 
And I say, when I say jujitsu, read judo, don't read BJJ. Um, when I, and then wrestling, which is more like a catch wrestling, mm-hmm. pieces like that that I picked up from people. Um, and then air, like even like some shoy jow stuff. And then you'll see stuff that is, you see shoves and trips and stuff from traditional martial arts that you just don't see because they're used for different things. I mean, modern judo, you're not allowed to grab below the, you're not allowed to grab the legs. Mm. They do that. Really? I didn't, I didn't know that. That modern rules, they changed it. You'll see in the Olympics, they don't, they're not allowed to go down and grab the legs anymore. Huh. Because again, um, at least from what I understand, the Olympic committee is like, okay, you're too similar to wrestling. Let's, let's differentiate. Judo wants to show that it has the big fall throws. BJJ, nobody in BJJ is known for their throws. Mm-hmm. Nobody. There's nobody in the UFC who does Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Anybody I know that, oh, that, 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 that's their jiu-jitsu, their throw. That's their judo. That's their wrestling throw. Right. The BJJ that's famous is on the ground. And it should have that. It absolutely should. They earned that. They're ground fighting. They did something that didn't exist in an old world because of, I won't even get into it, but there's so many different reasons why you don't go to the ground. And outside of sport, Brazilian jiu-jitsu took that neiwaza from judo and expanded on it. So mm-hmm. that's, it, their, it, and that's even their, when you watch their history or when they, t- they talk about their um evolution that's what they talk about is it started yeah, from I would say you judo self, and, and you and you know you had your fighting you went to you know your valtudo all these other things you had these fighting elements these challenge matches lots of martial arts had those what made brazilian jiu-jitsu popular was the ufc and was the usage of it on the ground and yeah. that is it is currently it is known for ground fighting and it owns that. It rightfully should get that credit. No other martial art does that. Wrestling has positioning and all that stuff, but this is what Brazilian jiu-jitsu has done on the ground was revolutionary. But that that does not discount um, what other styles have done for right. traditional martial arts. We still have those things that we do very, very well. And I would, I would even say, if you look at, um, let's just look at, the evolution of sports fighting or just how you had things that so you have the in china they had never been introduced to boxing and then when boxing came over there and the boxers were cleaning their clocks they were like oh crap what, what the heck is this but they adapted and they learned and they put that into some of their stuff that they do and then so boxing was the big thing boxing was still a big thing even when i was a young kid i mean we're talking about western you know boxing and um then you would have the the taekwondo and those kind of things had their when they came in. Kyuk, I don't ever know why. I, I, Kyokushin never took off over here. Kyokushin it was, was really a, weird. Like that one, Kyokushin, or even like Kudo, which is a modern break a mix of judo and Kyokushin and karate, which you want to see some fun fights. Like I would pay to go watch this stuff, especially you watch the Russians do it, who are just uh, Sambo. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's basically it. Like you watch them do, um, it's called Kudo, K-U-D-O, never studied it, but it's so much fun to watch. They wear a helmet and they wrap their hands and then they go to, and they wear geese and then they go to town on each other, kicks, punches, grabs, throws. And it is so entertaining to watch, so much fun. And it, it, it carries through like those lead leg high round kicks in the head. They'll do from arms reach to you. And it's all of a sudden, boom, you see wow. the <laughs> space helm. It's so cool to see this. I don't know why it didn't take off over here. I think because, you know, we also had the UFC, like MMA. This is, this is, our, this is a Western concept, this octagon, this cage. Right. I heard a rumor somewhere, and this would have changed things, that – before they ch- ch- landed on doing the cage for the octagon, they considered doing it almost like Lee Tai with um, just oh, a wow. And imagine what MMA would look like if you took that cage away. Because how much of MMA, like the current sport, mm-hmm. has, you, you wouldn't see a lot of these other things. It would be, mm-hmm. people would say to the center. I mean, you get to the center, it would be like throwing off the platform. There'd just be so much more dynamics as far as those. Again, we will never know, but if it was not have that cage, it would change the perspective of what martial arts worked in there. I would agree with that. 
hundred percent. I think that you would see a different, a different style. You wouldn't always see a bunch of the, like where they'll pin them and get them, get them up against the cage to work their ground techniques and stuff like that. It's, it's different. It's why you go on like these grapplers quests and stuff. You're not allowed to, if somebody's, you know, trying to put you in an armbar, you're not allowed to pick them up and slam them because it's too dangerous. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's dangerous, but I mean, it's also, an e- it's, it can be an easy out. I'm not saying you'll always get out because somebody who's good, but that's exactly it. Somebody who's good will always weigh a, a way to work. Mm-hmm. Somebody who is good, you go against somebody, a boxer, like other, maybe said all these other people, they get beat up by this, by the boxer. Then you go have them fight. Um, I can't remember his full name, but you can look it up. There's it, this historical, it's on all over the internet. Um, there was a guy named Morris the Boxer. He fought um, Henry Shishiro Okazaki in a challenge match in Hawaii. Um, he challenged other Japanese martial artists, cleaned the clock, go, went through. Okazaki, he went in there. Um, Okazaki wasn't going to fight. Finally did it you know, for the pride of jujitsu and things. And they went in there, fought this guy, got his nose broke round one. Went in there round two, still getting hit in the face, throws him, breaks, the, breaks Morris's arm. Mm-hmm. And it's and nothing against boxing. It's just you, you. He was able to beat other people, but you're you have individuals who are fighting each other. It's not styles. It's never style. Right. The people who who think it's style again, you're missing it. You're you're doing yourself a disservice. He won because of that. From what I understand the story, I mean, I'm not a historian. Morris, they became friends, and Morris became a student of his afterwards. Hmm. And what what a training thing that would be is somebody who you know just cleans your clock, knocking you in the nose and stuff, who could teach you boxing. And you could teach them jujitsu. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if there was an exchange. I'm sure there was. Any good martial yeah. art will always be a good exchange. Even if we even if I steal your shit and now say, oh yeah, it's mantis. No, because you were able to loan me your lens so I mm-hmm. could look at these forms, whatever it is, these techniques of mantis through your lens, and you may unlock or uh, some secret code and level up my my tong long because I never looked at it that way before. Right. I'm sure my interpretation of stuff is very different than a lot of guys because i look at it from a grappler's perspective and when i say grappling i'm not talking the ground i'm talking yeah, up here because i look at mantis mantis is a wrestling style wherever the hands are coming in um i describe it sometimes to people it's like it's like if boxing um you got boxing and wrestling and wing chun kind of mixed a little bit because you have like the wrestling hands we don't hold our feet like um, Wing Chun and work that little triangle. You know, we almost have a boxer stance. Like the back heel is up. It's there so you can come in and you can come in fast. There's just a lot of elements that are there. It's good. It's good. So um, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I'll be, look forward to talking to you again. All right. Thank you. God, we'll talk soon. Have a great one.